Today we're joined with Canadian rapper spoken word artist Baba Brinkman, who joins me from New York. Unlike most mainstream rappers, Baba Brinkman's music is a bit more unorthodox. That is, in his music, Baba delves into a wide array of informative and complex topics such as science, literature, vaccines, public health, evolution, climate change, sustainability. Information density, unbeatable in this industry. Mince meat made out of classical rap tendencies. So pick your favorite synonym for supreme, eminence, excellency, call it indefinite. Welcome to the show, Baba. You talk about some really complex and intellectually stimulating subjects, matters in your raps. What made you choose this medium? By that, I mean rapping to convey your messages. Well, I guess I, I chose rap before I had a message because I was just mm -hmm. a fan and I was a teenager and uh, I was in love with the art form and I was a hip hop head and I was like, you know, nothing more fun than a live rap show and a crowd throwing their hands up and call and response. And I just love the records. And I also saw it as you know, potentially a very powerful medium to get any message across. I felt like rappers really had a platform and their voices were being heard. And so, I mean, this is when I was like 18, 19, like, what am I going to do with my life? And uh, I thought if I got good at rapping, that would help me bring big, big ideas, good ideas into the world. And uh, make the world a better place, I guess, is my idealistic vision when I was younger. And so, uh, you know, it took me a while to get around to which topics. Um, and, and, you know, I, a few, probably about 10 years ago, I was like, science, the, you know, the, the most interesting stories are coming out of science labs, the things that are going to change the world, change our understanding of our place in it and, and how human well-being can unfold in the future. It's we need to understand science and, and you know, not be afraid of it because of its potential for good. So I decided to be like a science communicating rapper. Uh, that's, you know, that's the message that I landed on. Didn't necessarily have to go that way, but here we are. Now being a science rapper, uh, what's your writing process like? Usually it's kind of analogous to writing essays in college or in grad school. Mm -hmm. Like I do a review of the literature. Uh, I'll read peer reviewed articles. I'll read popular science books. I'll read um, you know, just scientific American style science journalism, get the take on like how the public conversation is engaging with this idea and then try to find a hip hop angle for it or reference some pop culture or, or, or musical uh, trope that can kind of serve as a hook to get people into it. But yeah, like really, I'm, I'm trying to absorb the literature as much as I can, then write the lyrics. And then usually I have a science consultant as well. Um, I'll have like a professional researcher that I've recruited in advance or that commissioned the piece or, you know, has just agreed to, to serve as my advisor. And I call what I do peer reviewed rap because I really don't put something out until I've had a gut check on the lyrics by someone that really knows about the the research and then you know then I can say I speak for the scientific consensus on this topic uh, such as it may exist. Now using the word uh, peer-reviewed that would imply that you are one of their peers so wouldn't that be rappers critiquing your work instead of scientists unless you had that kind of background sorry I'm just wondering <laughs> Well, I, I mean, in that context, it's a double entendre, right? Yes. Like, in a sense, rap is peer-reviewed because your rap peers tell you if they think it's good or not, and if it falls flat, then, you know, people are not going to be shy about being like, you suck. So that's a form of peer review. Uh, but in science, the technical peer review uh, process is about people who have first-hand experience with the literature and the research tell you whether they feel like the understanding you're presenting contradicts any of the known evidence. So, you know, I, I kind of, I, I aim for both. I want my music to be peer reviewed by my fellow rappers who will recognize the musicianship, by fans who will enjoy it, and also by scientists who can back me up and say, yeah, like this is factually accurate to the best of our knowledge. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, those are all important forms of peer review. Have you considered getting a scientific background, uh, for example, going to school for anything specific uh, to become a peer of, of the scientific field? Well, I, I do have a master's in comparative literature. Um, so I was a humanities person. I, you know, you know, there's the classic divide in the universities between like the arts departments and the science departments. Yes. I'm, I'm kind of like a traitor to my cause because I have a full on humanities and literature background as a scholar and could have 
you know, gone on to what do, you, what do you even do with an English degree? I guess teach English or be a writer or, you know, work in publishing or something. But um, no, I crossed the aisle and I don't, I don't know if I would go back for a PhD at this point, maybe in science communication or like in education. Philosophy of education would be interesting because I've developed this whole series of albums and shows that now are used by scientists and by educators, like high school teachers and college teachers play my videos for their students and say, you know, here's what we'll be talking about in class and here's a fun angle on it. So, um, you know, the, the education side, I would be more interested in studying. Uh, am I actually going to go back and get a full on science PhD at this point? Probably not. I'm in my 40s. Uh, I've got a pretty fun lane that I get to you know, I, I, it's like a it's like a food chain, right? I like I consume scientific literature, but I don't produce scientific literature. I just like run it up the flagpole in an, in a way that it wouldn't otherwise get heard. So when you're finding uh, your stories to wrap about, um, I know that you're mentioning that you look in Scientific America and different publications, but have you considered uh, talking to uh, students doing their master's degrees and seeing what they're working on and for their final assignments? Have you considered that? Or is it only what's already been published in um, different publications? I, I mean, I try to communicate research findings uh, and rather than so, sort of hypotheses or yes. speculative investigations. So, um, you know, I've, I've focused more on the working academics and professor level uh, in terms of what I'm communicating. But I recently just got my first gig, which is happening next week, which is a PhD thesis defense. And so this is a postdoc. This is a PhD who's, you know, uh, I think her, her field is astrophysics and um, the search for exoplanets. And I am going to attend the thesis defense with her advisors and then when they announce her as a newly minted PhD I will have a rap that I've composed that's like a summary of her research that I'm gonna then like kick and make a video about and then she can share it as part of her public outreach so um, yeah it does apply it kind of applies at all levels you know the the popular sort of dance your PhD phenomenon uh, we're, we're taking that to rap your PhD that's beautiful. Um, I know that you're talking about your rapper peers, and um, so where do you get your inspiration from, from from you, those peers? Uh, who really inspired you from a young age? You mean to get into rap in the to first place? To get into rap in the first place, yes. I mean, I, I got this mixtape when I was probably 11 or 12, and it had Eric B and Rakim, and Slick Rick, and Run DMC, and the Beastie Boys, and KRS-One. Uh, Karis One's track, My Philosophy, which had a real intellectual uh, thread running through it. So, um, you know, storytelling rappers, but that, you know, that's when I was younger. And then when I first got into rap, like in my late teens, it was probably like Notorious B.I.G. Uh, Eminem hadn't come out yet, but a few years later, I was uh, definitely would have associated with him. And Most Def, Talib Kweli, Black Thought, uh, Pharaoh Monch, you know, storytelling rappers, people that really can like use words to take you into their world. And and I was studying lit at the time, right? So I'm like mm -hmm. reading Shakespeare and Chaucer and William Blake in, in school, and I'm listening to Notorious B.I.G. and Nas and, um, you know, Karis One at home. And I was like, it's kind of all the same thing. You know, it's all like rhyme storytelling. Let's, we, we need to put it all together into, you know, it's like the oral tradition, the, the resurrection of the oral tradition in rap. Uh, that's what my first songs were all about, was like how rap is a new form of literature. So now, uh, who inspires you now from, I guess, mainstream kind of artists to more underground, but rappers that maybe most people would recognize? Who who are you pulling inspiration from? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of J. Cole. I think he's a very eloquent lyricist. Um, Kendrick Lamar, obviously. And, uh, you know, I, I listen to a little Drake every now and then. Uh, he's got some bars. Uh, those are pretty well-known rappers. Um, underground, I, I, I really like um, Run the Jewels. Uh, and uh, Homeboy Sandman is a hell of a lyricist. And then, you know, I, I, I'm friends with a bunch of rappers here in New York who are not household names but are also extremely talented. So I've started collaborating with some of them uh, more recently. Uh, MC Abdominal is one. Abdominal is Toronto-based. And uh, Mega Ran and... Uh, and Nathan DeFore and Jam Young. There's a, yeah, if you, uh, if you check out some of my social feeds, you'll see me posting uh, videos from rappers that I collaborate with here in New York. If you could collaborate with any artist, who would you want to work with? That's a great question. Yes. Um, wow, like pie in the sky? Uh, oh, yeah. 
I mean, I, I would have to say Nas, I guess. I mean, I, ever since I first heard Nas as a teenager, I just thought he was like, you know, the epitome of poetic lyricism. And, you know, he's still in the game. He's still making great music. So uh, Nas, if you're listening, <laughs> let's do a, Let's do a science track. So do you feel like your uh, what you're what you're putting out right now is more old school or new school? I mean, I think I'm always going to be old school in a way. Mm -hmm. I kind of cut my teeth on 90s and era, 2000s. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, you know, there's something about like the rap you absorb when you're learning to rap. Uh, I enjoy the the contemporary style, the sort of more like trap lean uh, style flows that are happening now. Um, you know, mumble rap there's it's less interpretable than it used to be maybe but i understand that a lot of people just want to listen to rap to like party and get a feeling and it doesn't matter so much like paying attention to analyzing every single lyric so i don't know i'm, I'm a fan of hip-hop in general like there's no kind of rap i don't like but there's a kind of rap that i feel more at home with and that's more like boom bap 90s era hip-hop for sure your latest album bright future came out recently what is your favorite song on the album and why? Wow, now you're my making me choose question. between my yeah. babies, my babies. Um, okay, let, let's go with um, Cloud Feedback. There's a track called Cloud Feedback. Uh, I wish I could play it for you right now, but um, we don't have the feed. But basically, uh, it's about climate change. Uh, and it's not just like we need to solve climate change, let's all become environmentalists. It's like how do scientists understand and predict exactly how much warming will result from how much emissions? And it turns out clouds play a huge role in the uncertainty because they reflect heat down, they reflect light up, they are kind of have a sometimes a warming and sometimes a cooling role depending on how high they are and their role changes depending on how warm it gets. It turns out to be vastly complex. So. Uh, you know, a cloud climate scientist reached out to me and said, could you explain the cloud feedback effects on climate sensitivity in a rap song? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. It took me like five rewrites to get the song right. I kept sending him drafts and he'd be like, no, it doesn't quite work that way. And then he'd send me another paper and be like, uh, rewrite the whole thing. Uh, but it's a finished track. It was peer reviewed. The scientist said, you know, you got it right. This is the state of human knowledge on this complex task uh, to understand this. And um I'm proud of it, and I also just think it really bumps as a track. It features a, a singer, um, uh, a Fijian singer um, named Skills that I met in Australia on tour a few years ago, and he sent me all the parts, recorded them over there and stuff. So, yeah, check it out. Tell us a little bit more about your project, Event Rap. What was the inspiration behind it? Well, the inspiration was uh, necessity is the mother of invention, because when the pandemic hit, I was like, what am I supposed to do now? You know, 2019, I did like 130 live shows on stages for people buying tickets. And that was my whole income was just gigging. And I know lots of artists that are the same. And I was like, well, you know, wait till the pandemic's over, I guess. Uh, and I started doing some Zoom gigs where I would sit in on a meeting or a lecture or a conference and I would write a song really fast, listening to what everyone said and like writing down all their quotes and their names. And then I perform the song at the end. And and I started getting booked to do this like quite often. And it basically is how I made a living all through the pandemic while I barely left my house. And uh, I, I, at the end of that sort of most of a year process, reached out to a bunch of artists I knew and said, would you be interested in doing custom writing projects where I'll say like, you have to write a song on this topic or you have to write a song in three hours at this event or you have to freestyle about these words that people give you as a way to make virtual meetings uh, just, you know, more energized and more engaging. And, you know, we've all experienced Zoom fatigue. So I, I founded this company called Event Wrap and I signed up a dozen artists to uh, deliver the same kind of services. And we're, yeah, we're just rolling out. It's pretty, exci it's pretty exciting. There's a bunch of new videos that the artists have all produced and the artists, they, they keep most of the income from it. Um, and then there's an overhead and anybody can commission a rap on any topic or have a rapper show up at their event and rap about whatever, you know, you, you tell us the topic, we'll bring the, we'll bring the creativity. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, so you went from planting a million trees in Canada to becoming a rapper. How did that all come about? Well, 
while I was planting trees, which was my summer job for about 10 years, um, you know, I was also going to college and I was a literature nerd and I used to rap while planting. So, you know, it's a very repetitive job. Maybe some people watching right now have done it as a summer job um, and you're out there all day, eight hours a day, plant the tree, take three steps, plant the tree, take three steps. And I would just rap along, you know, to that rhythm all day, scheming on, on uh, you know, how I could have an unusual lane in hip hop and uh, then I guess in 2003 I graduated from from my master's degree and I was like okay I'm you know I'm not tree planting anymore I'm not school anymore I'm just going to rap and it's all I've done since 2004 uh, is sort of take that foundation and bring it into you know new domains of how you can do rap and how you can make it work and what you can make it be about is there a social issue or scientific inquiry that's inspiring you right now? Well, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know if inspiring is the right word, but, you know, invigorating me is the challenge of how to bring people together around common knowledge. Because it seems like everything gets more and more fragmented with each year that goes forward. Mm -hmm. People are in their echo chambers and they only agree with their friends and they're yelling at each other on social media and one of the things that always really inspired me about science is that it's supposed to be true findings that are universally true no matter who you are who your friends are what your politics are etc so you know there are major fact disagreements uh between people that disagree over politics or religion or uh or social justice issues or anything like that but for me i really am impassioned by science communication and by bringing people together around the facts because I think science tells a story of us being part of one universal human family with very similar experiences and joys and fears and aspirations and um, you know really the potential to overcome differences that are petty disagreements and and you know embrace the universal human story so uh, you know that's 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 what I'm trying to do with my work and uh, whether that's a song I write or with event rap or anything, it's like, you know, messages that matter and bring the facts to the table and try to unite people around them when we agree on them and understand them. What can you see yourself writing about next? I know you just released a new album, so uh, all those ideas are probably pretty fresh in your mind. But do you have any inspiration right now about something you might want to work on in the future uh, besides the commissioned work? Yeah, well... <laughs> I mean, besides the commission work um, is hard for me to envision because it mm -hmm. keeps me really busy and it's really just become, you know, my whole my whole lane is is, you know, who can I find to collaborate with um, the idea like I haven't released an album that I just sat down and made on any topic I felt like for, uh, you know, more than 10 years at this point. Um, but I do have a new commission work that I'm excited about that I could tell you about. Okay. Uh, it's not 100% confirmed, but it looks likely because uh, several songs uh, were requested um, recently about mental health and, and psychiatry and, um, you know, psychological disorders or, you know, whether we call them disorders or whether they're just extreme uh, expressions of natural human emotions, however that's framed. Um, I think like destigmatizing de mental health and putting it in uh, a scientific context so that, um, you know, this is not a demon possession thing. This is things about how the human brain works, how it interacts with an environment and, and paths to greater wellness. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited to tackle it. I did one song about it a few years ago uh, called uh, Feelings for Reasons. There's a music video out. I tried to delve into the sort of basic science of mental health and causes of uh of of mental illness and um you know i'd love i'm really excited to take a deep dive it looks like i have a few people now ready to work with me on that and yet another domain of science that i think a greater understanding of the research could lead to much greater human well-being and and happiness and wellness all, all around um so let's go there well, I know that uh, a lot of artists struggle with mental illness and a lot of artists have released songs about uh, different mental illnesses that they've struggled with. Are you going to be pulling from that at all? Uh, I know like Eminem uh, was featured on a song about uh, some mental illness he might have. Uh, there's a lot of other rappers who've rapped about it. So are you going to be pulling from that? And can you uh, reference any that you've been kind of looking at right now? Um, I, I mean, I think the way that I would 
is there's a scientific literature I'll review, and then I'll find out what's the story I'm trying to tell, and then I'll look to hip hop and say like who has already, uh, you know, delved into these topics, who has been transparent about anxiety. I, I, I like there's a um, you know Kanye has been very open about um, having bipolar disorder and you know sort of talking about how he takes it as a a superhuman strength. And you know it's like a fuel that that drives him when he's uh, when he's in some of his states and in other states um, he tries to more go to ground and um, you know so what what I would probably do is like reach to the catalogs of various artists that I've talked about um, mental illnesses that they've struggled with and then um, you know use that as like a relatability framework for the science basically like what's going on in Kanye's brain when he's having a bipolar episode this way or that way when he's like I'm gonna run for president manic or when he's like um, you know this stuff ain't worth it I'm quitting uh, on the depressive side and and um, you know what are the sort of neurochemical signatures of those two brain states and how do people treat it and, um, and you know and, and find a path to wellness if that's their thing that they're struggling with um, yeah, I haven't gone quote mining for mental illness references and rap, but you're right. There's a ton of them, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you think that you're going to get any lashback, especially with that project? Because I know that people with mental illness, uh, regardless of what, what it is, uh, it's kind of like a spectrum. So people might be more in some areas, less in other areas. And do you think that people might get misrepresented um, if it just really uh, like bluntly rapped about? Well, I think if the project was for me to just pronounce about it without doing a lot of homework about what I'm talking about, then mm -hmm. there would potentially be backlash. But I, my goal with each of these projects is I find uh, a satisfactory interpretation of the literature that is really like this is the state of the science on this and it might not be settled it might be like these are the domains we understand these are the domains that we're still waiting for good evidence on and then that's what i have to represent and then you know i have a bunch of backup basically if people get upset then i you know then then i didn't do my job right because i'm just trying to say you know if you're interested in what the science says on this topic um, you know, I, I have some great findings that I can share with you, and they will relate to human experiences in these ways. And I would probably get some advice from people uh, that are, you know, that would consult on the lived experience side of mental illness as well. Um, but I, you know, I've, I've delved in the past. I did a song about cystic fibrosis a few years ago, um, and I'm not a cystic fibrosis sufferer myself, but I talked about, you know, what the science of it is and how we understand it and what are the symptoms that are, you know, really giving people a difficult time if they're living with it. And, um, you know, how can science help us see through? And, and there's a whole bunch of people that are commenting on the YouTube video, like, thank you for helping me understand my disease better. Um, and that's really what I'm trying to, you know, that's what I'm here trying to Just do. Just bring awareness. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And and awareness that, you know, the, that the research matters, that people are really investigating these questions in a methodical way. And it's not arbitrary. It's like there, you know, new medicines, new treatments. Maybe there's like a genetic, uh, there, there's a gene therapy treatment that for cystic fibrosis that comes out. And wouldn't people want to see that coming and understand how it relates to their experience or even like, you know, the origin side. That's why I, I do a lot of stuff about evolution uh, in a lot of my songs. So I think evolution will sort of help you understand the story of how something came to be, regardless of how it is right now. So, you know, the song I did about cystic fibrosis was how did cystic fibrosis evolve as a genetic disorder? That's what it is. If you get a certain gene, then you have it. And, um, you know, that's kind of bad luck, like shuffling the cards. But if it causes your life to be shorter how would that gene ever spread evolution would disfavor it but there's actually ways because it hitches a ride with other genes uh you know that can help people be like oh you know this is not some curse i'm not being singled out by the gods to be punished or whatever this is like a legacy of my ancestry as part of the human species and i think there is a similar story to tell about um when, when there's a genetic component to ment mental illness as well and of course a lot of mental illness is going to be triggered by environment environmental circumstances like pandemics right like the situation uh really really can um tip people over when they're on the edge in lots of cases and what can you do to take care of yourself and make it less likely that you spiral into a you know into an episode if you're on the spectrum in you know whatever whatever position on it yeah 
How do you deal with criticism? Because I know you touch on um, some topics people might feel very strong about. Uh, how do you deal with that criticism? Well, if I offend people unexpectedly, mm -hmm. then I will usually apologize because my goal is to not do that. I'm really like, that's kind of my benchmark is I'm always trying, I'm trying never to be unintentionally offensive. Mm -hmm. But of course, as an artist, you have to be intentionally offensive sometimes. Provocative, yes. Exactly, to provoke thought. And, and, and you know, I'm from the tradition of like, um, you know, the Jonathan Swift and a modest proposal and, and um, you know, the Oscar Wilde tradition of like, say something outrageous so that people start getting indignant and offended and then you can cause them to turn a lens back on themselves and recognize that some aspect of their offendedness might be somewhat hypocritical and that actually really is an effective way to get people to you know think outside of their own silo uh, so I will be offensive and I will really try to only be offensive on purpose for a very specific artistically designed reason uh, and when I mess that up then I usually say my bad so if you could change anything about yourself, uh, your younger self, what would it be in regard to the way that you rap or how you uh, sourced information, for example? Uh, what would that be? Well, I think um, the science thing, I came to a little bit late. Like I was rapping for about 10 years before I really started doing it. And, and since I started doing it, it's just really been this like powerful source of inspiration and purpose for me. So, um, you know, I might have I might have told my younger self to start looking at that earlier to, you know, pay more attention to science in college instead of just wanting to read poetry all day uh, and and think about ways to tell the stories of science earlier. But, you know maybe then things wouldn't have unfolded as they did and, and they unfolded in a pretty positive way so uh yeah i don't know i, I maybe uh, maybe i'll just tell my younger self it'll all work out because uh this seemed like a fairly unprobable path uh, improbable path for me to uh embark on as a teenager like oh yeah i'm gonna be a rapper and it's gonna be all academic and literature uh and and big ideas and philosophy kind of stuff oh yeah that's gonna work great right i'll have a really successful career uh you know it's uh <laughs> Seemed like a long shot then, and it seems like a long shot now. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm I'm pretty happy with the, you know what I get to do for a living every day. Now you've been in the rap game field for some time now, and you've gotten the chance to work on some really exciting projects. What project is your favorite? Well, I mean, it's pretty hard to beat uh, the rap guide to evolution. I did one kind of like the legacy of Charles Darwin show and album, and that was my first science communication project. And, you know, it just, it's the reason I'm here. I'm here in New York right now. I moved here 10 years ago because that show got option to perform off Broadway. And I did like 110 shows off Broadway with like a big billboard and my name and lights and, you know, got to rock the show for like 10,000 people that year. And uh, I got to perform it with Stephen Hawking. He was on stage giving a lecture. And then I came on like right after him and did my evolution rap and then freestyled about him and he's like watching from his wheelchair on the side of the stage and the wings you know it just it, it brought me to some really exciting places and and helped me sort of connect with a whole network of scientists and and science advocates that has fueled the whole rest of each project that i take on so you know if you want to see where it all started look up the rap guide to evolution it's still out there where can you see yourself 10 years from now? I know that you've come a long way. Every every 10 years, I feel like for you, it's it's something different. So uh, where can you see yourself in 10 years? Well, I, I mean, I'm really excited by this event rap thing right now. You know, I, I kind of feel like, to be honest, I'm a little disillusioned with the sort of standard rap game. You know, you like try to get signed by a record label and you try to release lots of music and try to get some label to pay for it if you can or, you know, and, and it just feels like it's very hierarchical. Like there's a few artists that really make a lot of money from rap and there's a ton of artists that are super talented that don't make much money from rap. Uh, so with Event Rap, which is a company that I just founded and I'm, and I'm building, and you know, it's got a dozen artists now, but you know, the more work I can generate for the artists, the more artists I can sign to the platform. I really want to just work on this uh, and, and see how much new content my artists can produce paid for by people that care about the topic. You know, so the event rap team, one of them did a rap about the philosophy of stoicism. 
and how it can help you cope with modern life. And one of them did a song about the, the ecology of tree canopies. And one of them did a song about freedom of the printing press. And one of them did a song about machine consciousness. And they're getting paid to write songs about these diverse topics. And they're getting paid by a, a, a backer, a, a commissioner who's like, this is the thing I wish there was a rap about. Here's some further reading so you can get your hands on it. And then the rapper just gets to write their own song and say what they want about it and they own the product at the end and I'm, I'm really excited about this as a business model as a way to sort of change how the rap game works frankly and uh, I just want to bring more and more artists into it and um, you know see how far we can take it see how many songs and videos and albums we can produce outside of the normal channels of you know the underground pipeline from aspiring artists to signed artists to platinum artists that pipeline to me looks like it has a huge wide funnel at the beginning and a tiny little pig and prick at the end in terms of which artists get through it. And, you know, they talk about leaky pipelines, right? Like who who starts studying a topic and who ends up quitting halfway. And rap has one of the leakiest pipelines I've ever seen. And I founded Event Rap because I want to try to broaden that pipeline and have more uh, diverse artists and voices and, and you know, talent the talent pool needs to be expanded and, and they all got to stay working and stay making money from rap so that's what i want to do in 10 years it's the uh it's like it's like forget uber eats we're making uber raps and you can commission a rap on any topic and i want it to be huge so could you make a rap potentially right now about anything? absolutely absolutely oh. anything at all you give me the topic i'll give you the freestyle okay so i'm going to say tag tv uh julia cosby uh, we're going to say a uh, man who ate a burger every day for a year <laughs> and um, hmm, I guess I guess maybe you can pick the last one. <laughs> okay. Do you have a favorite animal? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love umbrella cockatoos. Umbrella cockatoos. Yes. All right. All right. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's rock that beat right in there. Yo, Baba Brinkman, yeah, you know my thoughts deep, but not as deep as Miss Julia Cosby. That's right, I hip hop and I boast, but I'm not like her as like a television host. Oh my God, she makes it seem so easy when she's the anchor on here, tag TV. Yeah, that's how it goes, that's right, I never drag my knuckles like a crow magnon. No, I just tag other rappers with the hashtags. I rap brag, yeah, can't you see I've got that mad swag? Oh my God, I'm rocking any idea. I'm like that man who ate a freaking burger every year yeah that's right you could take that and just quote it a burger every year that man must be bloated oh my god yo that's the best y'all except he must have mad jacked up cholesterol it's how it goes it's how it goes i rock the groove i'm in the mood just like a cockatoo yeah that's right i rock the same chorus but i can't remember the exact specific name for it you're all down with your species mad naming them that's the nomenclature i'm not blaming them i'm just saying anything you throw at me i could probably just flip into an ill dope rap beat. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, tell me again. What was the cockatoo? It was, I remembered umbrella cockatoo, cockatoo, but not the first. Umbrella cockatoo. Umbrella okay, cockatoo. Then. But that was, oh uh, those topics yeah. were so unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed that you're able to put them together because they're so different. But oh my goodness, I know that you're very busy and I know that you have many other raps to write. So I'm going to let you go and continue doing that. But thank you so much for coming on the show. It was really my pleasure, Julia. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Inbox with Julia Cosby on Take TV.